Hey guys, welcome back to Twitch Space Kerbal Space Program, particularly welcome back to Catty Kerman, our newest recruit who we had to rescue from the like depths of a stranded orbit. You'll see up there the, the grey line that we needed to do, uh, that we needed to go rescue her from, and of course is now part of our team and ready to prove her worth, as, as all our team members are, of course. Now, if we go over and see Gene, he's got a selection of rather spiffing contracts for us that we can put together to, into a moon mission. Uh, so first off, we have uh, get some science from around Kerbin. That, that's easy enough to do. Then we have to plant some flags on the moon, or a flag on the moon, and then there is uh, survey data. And we'll go and have a quick look at this survey data, what exactly it is we need to do here. So the two on the upper right, or now upper left of our screen, are crew reports over a certain height, or in fact under a certain height, whereas on the far left or bottom of our screen now as I'm conveniently moving it around that is actually a cluster of points those ones right there where we have to do EVA data so my plan is that we try and land from right to left to get the crew report as we're doing it and land on those EVA sites but if that fails we can also then take off back along the same line so that we can try and get it so we, so we have two shots at doing it yeah mission redundancies are what space travel is all about after all before going to the VAB to work on our uh, vehicle for this particular mission I think it's time to come over and have a look and see what science we can spend out here uh, with the 45 points well the 47 points that I have I can only afford to buy one of these 47 pointers and after thinking long and hard I think it's time that we actually got these uh, structural supports here that is mainly for the actual strut space tape uh, without that we're not really going to build a fair sized mission are we uh, just things will rock uh, rock around and shake itself apart and, and just get all all inconvenient so in the VAB my original plan was to go for a two person design which left to all sorts of weird designs uh, this sort of strange thing with the fuel tanks top and bottom just to see if it would work no that didn't work next up is this horror of radial engines that too didn't work because the weight of the engines was too much to give us a decent delta V and yeah that had to be scrapped uh, unfortunately I didn't have anything to any small engines to put on the bottom here so we had to go for a bottom loaded Launch, launcher lander whatever you want to call it here then running with this basic design but dropping the second pod in favor of science and making sure everything else was sorted going uh, delta v for the returns and, and landings and stuff like that we ended up with this crazy design i say crazy design it's a fairly standard design to be honest but yeah we ended up with this design is the Collins craft obviously in honor of Michael Collins the operations guy that went to the moon with Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong but unfortunately didn't get to land on the moon I always think he gets a little bit left out of all sort of space history and memorabilia and stuff like that so I've decided to honor the man here with our first vessel that is going to land on the moon just to to give him that opportunity to be able to do solid moon stuff a few tweaks of design the addition of more boosters and more space tape takes us to the launch pad so we can see there we go, the Phyllis Craft. Isn't it great? Definitely going back to our roots with this design. I call this side of onion staging as we don't have the fuel lines to be going asparagus. We haven't got any fuel leading inwards. So it is just layers that we throw off as we go make our way up into orbit. The uh, ascent profile was fairly standard. As you will know, not a single bit of SAS touched my controls as we are doing this launch. As we're still early in the series, I think I'll take a moment to actually explain my flight path. So we start off on the vertical, and as soon as I fire my engines and start making my way off the ground, I go to, oh, nice explosion, 10 degrees off of vertical. I then let my, my rocket basically fly itself. Because I have the fins on the bottom, it is totally aerodynamically stable, so it likes to point towards its retrograde. And as long as I give it that first push off of the launch pad, it likes to lean over at exactly the right rate for us to get up into, into orbit. Well, at least up to this sort of 20 or 30 kilometer mark, whereupon I put on my SAS, and we point roughly at about 30 degrees, maybe a little bit higher, maybe a little bit shallow, depending on how the rocket's been performing so far. And go through all my staging until my Apple apps as seen here goes right up above 75 kilometers uh, we're going to take a moment just to admire the beauty of the silhouette of this craft against the, the, the sun before we start thinking about well, how far up we are what we need to do to circularize our orbit uh, it's a fairly standard procedure at this point we are just waiting for our craft to break the line of the upper atmosphere so we can start thinking about our circularization burn again we are waiting until we are very close to our Apple apps I prefer to wait till below 
30 seconds until we get to our Apple Apps. Once again, the Kerbal Engineer is an absolute life saver here. Uh, all the details up on the top left of my uh, HUD readout there give me all the details I need without having to go in and out of the map view to see how close to the Apple Apps I am and stuff like that. Particularly when you're trying to make a, a low orbit with, with a very confined, very confined eccentricity. But anyway, with enough explanations taking up enough time, we have finally made our way up into a circular orbit and, you know, I think that's good. This, this is exactly where we need to be to take ourselves off onto a Mun mission. Well, because this is the best place to try and figure out where we're going from this point, right? When planning missions, it's all about the practicalities now. We're going to get some of the science done and meet the contracts and stuff like that. But we we have to take a moment and remember some of the things that happened. One of the things that we remember from last time was that a solar eclipse was on its way to happen. So Valentina has got herself out so that she can take a little bit of a PR photo here. We're trying to get her uh, lit up well enough, but also being able to see that solar eclipse in the background. And this is what the game is all about. Well, it's not what the game is all about, but this is what being in space is all about. These majestic views across the infinite voids of waste whilst we float around in a tiny spacecraft that's barely designed to keep us alive against the horrendous conditions that are around us but you know when we take all that in our stride we get to enjoy the beautiful things that happen like the eclipse there with such inconsequential stuff such as the random alignment of celestial bodies out of the way it's time to start plotting our course towards the moon this first burn done in low carbon orbit is all about getting the altitude uh, trying to make sure my apple apsis is going to intersect the moon at some point and this is a fairly standard thing i'm pretty sure we've all done this as you will see i'm not using any maneuver nodes all i did was wait for the moon to rise up over the horizon as i was orbiting carbon and then just started thrusting towards my prograde for everything that i was worth indeed spending the vast majority of my delta v at this point because indeed that's what it's that's what the delta v is there for we're going to be using the atmosphere to aero break on our way back so there is no need to save it for such things as that for later on with our altitude burn complete it's time to start thinking how we're actually going to approach the moon and this is the time to start busting out maneuver nodes you will note that i place it halfway along my my predicted trajectory because this is the place where we can make most difference towards the inclination when we get towards the moon i could be changing it down in low carbon orbit but all it's really going to do is pivot around the place where i am and around the moon which isn't quite what we're trying to do here so I would start by moving my trajectory up top and I'm trying to think how, what's the best way to approach these uh, these landing sites. Well, not just the landing sites, but the, the crew reports that need to be done on the way to the landing site. And I eventually decide that maybe this will be a close enough approach to be getting going on with. Uh, it's quite expensive on the Delta V, but we're, we're just going to run with it because it puts us in a better position than what our original flight did. And well, we're just going to have to deal with it because we're on our way to a mission and we're never going to fail this mission ever so after a bit of time warping we've finally reached our halfway point it's time to start thinking about how we're actually going to change our trajectory here now during the intervening time between the last maneuver node set and coming to here i've realized that maybe this isn't the best way to do it um, I do see that there is a massive inclination change that needs to happen. No matter how we approach this, we're going to have to have a massive inclination change. And the best way to do that is when we're traveling as slow as possible, which means we need a bigger orbit as possible. So we're just going to push this out to, to the very reaches of the sphere of influence and then decide what we're going to do when we get a little bit closer. Like, for instance, when we enter the moon's sphere of influence, it seems like the best time to decide what we're going to do here. So I've put up a maneuver node to po point us at the right direction at the right time, and I'm still um and ahhing about this. I'm like, no, it doesn't look right. It, it just looks so inefficient. That, that, that's the word that just keeps screaming at me the whole time, is that inefficiency of it all. I'm just like, well, we've got to be able to do better than this. We've just got to. So let's um, let's think about how we're going to do this. Let's kill this maneuver node and let's just... Oh, wait, there's another maneuver node. Let's get rid of that. And let's just think about how we're going to do this. So I slam down another maneuver node really close to my present position and just try and get a, a rough approximation of where it needs to be to make sure that I line up with all this stuff. And, th and that looks close enough for me to be able to like point my trajectory around, maybe get us into the right place at the right time. Uh, so we are going to point towards that maneuver node, even even though it's not exactly here at the right time one thing that i have learned is when you're far out from your place and, and doing little things like this the odd minute here or there or even when you're in deep space the odd day here or there doesn't really matter all that much as long as you you are far away and you're not you know an hour away from crashing into the planet that that would be times when it's like bad to make these last second maneuvers but we throttle up hard. When I throttle up hard, we'll, we'll see that we're finally starting to bring this trajectory round to over a polar 
approach and th this is what we're going for obviously we want to get a nice polar approach with a real low um well, angle of approach i'm not sure how you how would you define uh how flat your orbit is as you're going towards it but you know it's quite a flat orbit so we can get down underneath these crew report markers obviously we need to be underneath i believe it was 12 and 10 kilometers for each one which on the moon is a very low orbit let me let me just remind you of that there are uh, mountains on the moon that, that could cause you considerable trouble for heights like this but this is all good this line looks like it's doing well for me obviously we have the spin of the moon to worry about but as a rough approximation to get us going that looks pretty good Falling along our best guess trajectory line and circularizing at periapsis as is the way we're going to the moon. We end up with this sort of rough pattern here. It, it's close enough to the landing site and indeed close enough to all the crew report markers to make me think that maybe this is the one that we're going to go for. We have a little bit of maneuver no playing to do here just to try and make sure everything lines up well. I am not going to bore you with all this. We're just going to jump to the execution so you can see this perfectly circular orbit we've got ourselves in and me dumping my extra fuel tanks this presents a bit of a worry to me because i was fairly certain that they were going to be bringing me down to the surface of the moon now obviously we've done a lot of maneuvering around and getting everything like just so and indeed even with making it just so we are still so far out of line that it, it's not even funny anymore well i suppose it is quite funny um, but yeah, we're, what we're going to do is just kind of come down for the easy EVA parts. But whilst we're at it, let's just take a moment to look at this wonderful terrain that we have on the North Pole here. Uh, it, it, beautiful stuff, but we need to try and figure out where we're going to land. So I'm going to put down a rough maneuver node at where I believe the landing site to be. Now, unfortunately, the, the sort of the resolution on the map view here didn't make it very easy. And indeed, at this sort of view out, I couldn't get any closer. One thing that I did notice is that whilst you're focused on the moon, you can't get anywhere near as close as if you're focused on your ship. So uh, something to watch out there for if you guys are trying to like make a, uh, an accurate landing zone using maneuver nodes. Make, make sure you're focused on the ship, not on the moon. But anyway, with all that waffle, we are finally coming down for this final approach on the moon and touchdown yay we are first first kerbal on the moon this is what it's all about and what a beautiful uh, beautiful view of kerbin over there that is amazing of course to complete this mission we have to do a couple of things the first one being of course laying down a flag on the moon we're going to call this one low hanging kerbin and then we're going to delete that and do it again because we had caps lock on from the fine controls and we're going to write a little thing on the bottom here because things look more pretty when they're on the horizon uh, and this is exactly what happened there that things were very much more pretty on the horizon even with all my spelling mistakes and typos there that's amazing okay so we're going to get back in the vessel and then we're going to figure out how we can get over to these easy VA points. Taking a moment to have a look at our map view here, you can see that we are actually a significant arc of the planet away from where we want to be. And this, this is a little bit disturbing to me here, but I think maybe it's time to address this issue. Though my first thought is to use my EVA jetpack. I mean, we've got lots and lots of fuel here, so we might as well make use of that. Of course, what we are going to do first before we do any of that is make sure that all this science is safe. Uh, like, I do have a habit of blowing up stuff either attached to my ship or strapped to the underside of my ship, either through overheating when we come back to Kerbin or just, you know, buy a bit of good old fashioned litho braking to make sure that we can stop fast enough. And then eventually everything is all fine. Okay, so with everything inside the ship, it's time to actually bust out our jetpack and figure out which way we're going. Now, looking at the uh, the map view here, I can see that our trajectory is halfway between Kerbin and the sun. So we're just going to kind of aim for that and hope everything works out well. Uh, my plan is just to push forward as fast as we can, maybe get down to half my, my jetpack fuel and, and then stop. Uh, sorry, not half, a quarter, because obviously we need to keep half of it for the return journey and, and just see how far we get on this. Okay, so we're going over the surface pretty fast now and it's always quite quite sketchy doing so. And unfortunately, I clipped my feet and as soon as I see this big chasm here, I'm like, oh, it's all over. We're falling far too fast and boom, indeed I was. The glories of Quicksave have managed to take us back to our vessel so we can like have another pop at this if we can. But one of the things that was really bothering me was we are playing this back at quite a speed here and that little flight that happened actually took me all oh, five ten minutes something like that and if you look on the map i barely even made it a third of the way there so i'm thinking that maybe jetpack fuel isn't the way to go we need to take our actual vessel instead 
But there is another problem with that as well. If you have a look on my HUD, you will see that I've changed the bottom value to how much Delta V we have remaining. And if anybody knows how much Delta V you need to get back from the moon, uh, I can tell you that under a thousand is not enough. Under a kilometer is not enough. You need at least a kilometer, 200, something like that, to be able to make your way back. And I have got 700 and, and still dropping. Of course, we've got to, got to land yet. We've got to make our way back. It's all looking a little bit sketchy for Valentina at this present moment in time, but we are Kerbals. We are going to push our way through this. We have a mission to succeed on, and by Jove, we are going to do it. And I keep saying by Jove in my episodes recently, and by Jove, that's a good way of expressing myself. So we have arrested our horizontal vol uh, velocity and we are just waiting to fall now. Uh, I am waiting for as long as possible because obviously with this little fuel, suicide burns are the way to go, but I keep... Uh, over, oh well, underestimating how powerful my engines are, overestimating ha how little we've got left to go. Even, even that's an underestimation, but all right. Uh, and we put ourselves right on the edge of this crater, which kind of fills me with hope. If we're on a crater, we could just like let Valentina fall around and do stuff like that, and then that'll get us to the right places we need to go. But one of the things that happened is we passed through one of the EVA points on our way over here. So we just need to fly back a little way and find out where that is. Obviously, we have no actual representation of it when we're in EVA. So we just kind of have to fly and wait for it to tell us just like that. So we bring ourselves to a nice little stop. Perfect landing there. I do enjoy that a, a good landing. It really makes me feel like I know how to use a jetpack when stuff like that happens. So we're going to take this back to the ship, obviously, to keep the EVA report safe. I mean, we could have just gone around and overwritten all of them and we still would have got the uh, the contracts done for them and that would have been fine but we've taken that EVA back to the ship and now we need to go get the other two now I do happen to know that they are both inside the crater that we landed the ship on the wall of so a little known fact about Valentina is she used to be a professional stuntman. She has been in many movies in the past and as such has picked up many techniques of how to make herself look graceful whilst falling down the side of a canyon. Uh, not a canyon, a crater. Maybe she would look graceful down the side of a crater, a canyon as well. This is uh, things that need to be tested. But look at the style, the poise, the elegance. Uh, this is something that only really a female Kerbal could do. If a, one of the male Kerbals tried to do this, man, they just kind of slide around on their face and look a little bit sad and pathetic. Not not like Valentina here, not with her cartwheels and backflips and everything else that really goes into making things look just ultra impressive. So after a couple of goes of trying to get the EVA whilst we were on the floor, we eventually finally managed it and came to a rest at the bottom of this crater here. Looks pretty good, but we need to find out where our next EVA point is. And having a, a good look around, I think it is possibly off in that direction there. I, I think that it's actually up on the wall somewhere, but I'm not too certain at this point in time. Okay, so using a little bit of time acceleration here, we can cross the, the floor of the crater a lot quicker. And Valentina shows off her secondary skills as a major dancer. Uh, if we could just put a little bit of J-pop over the top here, and, and you'll see that her dance moves are amazingly good. But we're at the uh, the EVA point here, so we're going to grab that and think about how we're going to fly back to our vessel over there. One great big swooping flight obviously would be the ideal way, so I've taken note that we are 700 metres away and I have jumped and start pressing forward. The moment we hit, like, 350 metres, I start pressing backwards and, with the glories of that, we make this perfect landing here. Amazing. A little bit of a bounce, but that's okay. Unfortunately, before we get in the ship, I think that's probably a good idea to go and have a look over the side, and then she slips. Ah, oh, dear. And she falls all the way down to the bottom of the crater again. Indeed, further away than last time. So we use the same technique as last time. We fly up and forwards, and halfway there, we start breaking again. Unfortunately, this time, we land bang on the slope and start slipping all the way down again. Three times this has happened now. One thing that I have noticed that I did also allude to earlier on is the Kerbals seem a little bit bouncier than last time. Or maybe it's just the female Kerbals uh, seem bouncier than normal. Maybe it's something to do with their different size head. One thing I did notice whilst watching Valentina fall down here was her head did rattle around a lot and sometimes came out the back of her helmet and caused all sorts of weird clipping issues and stuff like that. But anyway, we find ourselves right back down at the beginning of our... Well, uh, the exact same point as where we first started taking off from when we were inside the crater. 
Twitter, which to me is a little bit exasperating, but you know, there we go. So with all the fun of bouncing down the craters out of the way, it's time to start thinking about how we're going to get out of here and get home. So we're going to have a look at our map view and try and just figure out which way our trajectory is. It's almost directly north, so we're going to head towards that particular point over there on our map. I start off by flying in the wrong direction because sometimes it's really hard to figure out which way you're supposed to be going on the nav ball. And I'm trying to keep my Apple Apsis well below 10 kilometers, which on the moon is relatively easy to do without the added like worries of air resistance. You can just like point towards the horizon and don't have to worry about pointing up at all. Um, Unfortunately, I am really starting to run out of fuel here and I'm just giving it a little bit of push every now and then as we get within 30, uh, 30 seconds, maybe even 7 seconds I believe was actually the distance from my Apple Apsis where I started firing my engines. But we got our first um, crew report done and now I'm just going to try and turn my engines around a little bit to point in the right direction but we are out of fuel totally and utterly out of fuel we are in something approaching a stable orbit and because this is the Kerbal way we can actually finish our mission there we go that is everything done and with that I'm gonna say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure this has been Valentina Kerman joining you from low orbit very low orbit from around the Mun being all dark and I will see you next time when we're gonna rescue her bye